This lesson describes the Electronic Horizontal Situation Indicator, or EHSI, and its typical operational modes. The EHSI forms part of the Electronic Flight Information System, or EFIS, which is described in the early companion lesson on the Electronic Attitude Director Indicator. This lesson also looks at typical navigational and flight information displays and the colour coding in use. However, different aircraft and equipment manufacturers may present the information in slightly differing formats. Each pilot has his own EHSI which presents an electronically generated plan view of the aircraft's orientation. The instrument is traditionally located immediately below its associated EADI, or Electronic Attitude Director Indicator, on the left and right instrument panels. However, an alternative and increasingly more common trend is shown here, which locates the EADI and EHSI side by side on their respective instrument panels. A separate display control panel is provided for each EHSI. By means of four principal display modes, which can be manually selected, a substantial amount of flight information can be shown or overlaid. The four principal display modes are VOR, ILS, MAP, and PLAN. VOR mode can be further subdivided into Full VOR mode and Expanded VOR mode. Similarly, ILS mode can be subdivided into Full ILS mode and Expanded ILS mode. We will look at all the modes in turn this lesson. The modes are selected using the controls on the EHSI section of the EFIS control panel, which is highlighted here. The control knob in the centre of the EHSI control panel is the principal mode selector. Boeing uses the following conventional signs. Airbus and other manufacturers use similar ones. This is an active waypoint. It is coloured magenta because the aircraft is on the leg to this particular point. Other route waypoints, for instance those on the legs ahead of the present one, are shown in white. The blue triangle is what Boeing call an off-route waypoint. It means a known reporting point, usually in the local airway structure, but not one which your route follows. A blue circle is an airport. Next to it is the four-letter ICAO identifier. For instance, Echo Golf Lima Lima is Heathrow. This three-legged symbol is a navigation aid, usually a VOR. This one is coloured green because we've tuned it on one of the aircraft VOR receivers. If it is coloured blue, it means that it is in the vicinity and it therefore appears on the map display to show that it is available for use, but the VOR is not presently tuned to it. This white arrow appears in the bottom left corner of the EHSI display and shows the wind direction relative to heading or track, whichever is selected. This example means that the wind is from half past one. It would only mean that the wind was from 045 degrees if the aircraft were heading north. Let's start by looking at the full VOR mode. So let's select VOR with the control knob. Firstly, we can see that in this mode a full compass rose is displayed on the EHSI screen. In addition, other flight information is displayed and we will work our way around the display in a clockwise direction looking at the information provided. Starting in the lower right hand corner, the chosen VOR frequency is displayed along with a VOR to from annunciator just above. Moving to the left now, the selected VOR source is displayed in the lower left-hand corner of the EHSI screen, which in this case is the NAV2 source. 
and just above this we can see an instantaneous readout of the wind direction and strength. In the top left hand corner we can see the DME distance to the selected VOR. This figure will of course increase or decrease depending on whether the aircraft is tracking towards or away from the selected VOR source. Next, the current heading is shown in the window at the top of the compass rows, and in this example we can see it is a heading of 130 degrees magnetic. Note that the heading reference selected is magnetic north in this instance, because heading may also be referenced to true north if desired. If we look now at the information overlaid on the compass rows, we can see that the course selection is displayed by the magenta course indicator, which in this case is showing a track set of 150 degrees. Any track deviation is shown by the magenta course deviation bar, which can move across a two dot left or two dot right deviation scale. Current track is shown by the white triangle on the inside edge of the compass rows. At the lower part of the compass rows display, we can see another white triangle. This is a VOR to from pointer, which is provided in addition to the VOR to from annunciator in the lower right hand corner of the EHSI screen. We can see the pointer is confirming that the aircraft is tracking away from the VOR source. Finally, a magenta heading bug on the outside of the compass rows can be moved around the perimeter of the compass rows to indicate a selected heading. In VOR mode, we have the choice to select either the full compass rows display, as we have seen in full VOR mode, or we can select an expanded VOR display by pressing the EXP ARC button. In expanded VOR mode, we are also able to have a weather radar facility, so let's select weather radar on as well. The expanded VOR display on the EHSI shows approximately 90 degrees of an enlarged segment of the compass rows. In this display, the aircraft is represented by the white triangle at the base of the EHSI screen. In the lower right hand corner, we can see the VOR frequency selected. And also the VOR to from annunciator. Instantaneous wind speed and direction are shown in the lower left hand corner of the EHSI screen with the selected VOR source displayed below. The DME distance is displayed in the top left hand corner. The current heading is shown in the window at the top of the compass row segment and the heading reference selected is magnetic north. The selected track is displayed by the magenta course indicator which we can see is set to a track of 150 degrees. Any track deviation is shown by the magenta course deviation bar, which as we now know can move across a 2 dot left or 2 dot right deviation scale. The current track is shown by the white line extending from the tip of the aircraft symbol to the compass arc. The selected heading is shown by the magenta bug on the outer scale of the compass rows. In expanded modes, weather range arcs are superimposed on the EHSI screen. In our example, we can also see some adverse weather conditions out to the left of the aircraft. Weather radar uses the colours green, yellow and red to depict areas of poor weather. Green indicates the least severe turbulence and red the most. The most severe turbulence, however, may also be highlighted in magenta. Let's now select the ILS mode. 
With an ILS frequency selected, the EHSI displays a full compass rose. This is full ILS mode. There is an expanded ILS option, which we will look at shortly. Let's examine the ILS display, starting again in the lower right-hand corner. Here is the selected ILS frequency. And here is the ILS source displayed in the lower left-hand corner. The course indicator now represents the ILS localizer, and the course deviation bar shows the localizer deviation across a two dot left and two dot right deviation scale. DME, current heading, current track, selected heading, and instantaneous wind speed and direction are all shown in the format which we should now be familiar with. In addition, of course, the ILS mode needs to display glide slope information, and this can be seen to the right of the EHSI screen in the form of a magenta glide slope pointer along with a two dot fly up, fly down deviation scale. ILS also has an expanded mode. The screen display is extremely similar to the expanded VOR mode. As we would expect, however, the fundamental difference between the expanded VOR mode and the expanded ILS mode is that the expanded ILS mode includes the glide slope pointer and deviation scale. We can see the glide slope pointer and deviation scale on the right hand side of the EHSI screen. Also, note that a weather radar display is available with expanded ILS. Let's now switch to map mode. Here we have a plan mapping display of our route. Traffic information from TCAS, the Traffic Alert and Collision Avoidance System, can also be displayed along with terrain information from the Enhanced Ground Proximity Warning System e.g. PWS. Once again, the triangular symbol at the base of the display represents the aircraft and flight information up to 90 degrees either side of track is displayed. Heading information is supplied by the appropriate inertial reference system. The compass rose segment can be selected to either magnetic or true north between latitudes 73 degrees north and 60 degrees south and to true north only above these latitudes. The aircraft route is displayed as a continuous magenta line joining the programmed waypoints. The waypoints are added and erased as the flight progresses. The waypoint the aircraft is currently tracking towards is called the active waypoint and is displayed as a magenta star. Other waypoints making up the programmed route are called inactive waypoints and are shown as white stars. The distance to the next waypoint is shown on the top left of the display screen. And the computed time to the next waypoint is shown to the top right of the screen. Computed times are also shown adjacent to the other en route waypoints. Weather radar can be overlaid as we can see in the example here. Along with the now familiar display of instantaneous wind strength and direction in the lower left hand part of the screen. Lateral deviations and vertical deviations from the selected flight path can also be displayed. The Flight Management Computer, or FMC, can predict events by combining current ground speed and lateral acceleration to show a curved trend vector, shown here in white, or a range to altitude arc for climb and descent rates, which we can see here represented in green. Off-route waypoints and navigation aids can be shown in their relative position to the aircraft's progress and are coloured cyan. Lastly, we have the plan mode. With this mode selected, a static map background is displayed with the active route data orientated to true north. Any changes to the route may be selected at the FMC keyboard, 
and shown on the EHSI display so they can be checked before they are entered into the flight management computer. This display needs careful reading because the top part of the EHSI display remains the same orientation as in map mode, that is, track orientated. Whilst the route section is north orientated. For instance, the route from Tobix to Logan is an approximate track of 020 true, not 150. There is no weather radar display with this mode, nor is wind speed and direction displayed on the EHSI screen. It is possible for pilots, independently of each other, to select any of the modes we have looked at. Weather radar is only available in three modes. These are Expanded VOR Expanded ILS and Map it cannot be displayed in any other modes. Finally, let's look at failure enunciations. Should a signal from a data source fail, the failed data source will be highlighted or flagged in yellow. Here we can see failure enunciations of the heading the localizer, the map display, and both VORs. Clearly, you would not normally expect to see all of these at once. This is a demonstration. In addition, faults may be displayed in message form on the EHSI display. The principal display modes are VOR, ILS, map, and plan. VOR mode can be displayed in Full VOR mode or Expanded VOR mode. ILS mode can be displayed in Full ILS mode or Expanded ILS mode. The modes are selected using the controls on the EHSI section of the EFIS control panel. A full weather radar display is not available in full VOR, full ILS and plan modes. The information displays available in the principal and expanded modes should be noted. The compass rows may be referenced to magnetic or true north from the IRS between latitude 73 degrees north and 60 degrees south and to true north above these latitudes. EHSI modes can be independently selected on the captain's and co-pilot's control panels. Failure of a data signal is highlighted or flagged in yellow or maybe in message format. The common symbols should be noted.